The following is the second episode in the VFD troubleshooting using an oscilloscope series. In this presentation, we're going to use the scope and look at the input voltage and current waveforms. In this presentation, we're going to start out first with a safety moment. We're then going to talk about briefly about making sure you understand what type of signal you're looking for when using an oscilloscope and also relying on the auto button and getting a signal on the screen. And then we're going to dive in and look at, I'm going to show you sample input voltage and current waveforms on the scope. I'd like to start out with a safety moment first. We have to think about arc flash safety when we make connections to a VFD's power terminals with a voltage probes or current clamps. So we want to make sure we follow all lockout takeout procedures. And this even applies beyond the scope. This applies to even multimeters and power quality analyzers. We also want to make sure we're wearing the proper arc flash safety gear when making these connections. And before you make any connections to the VFD, once you remove power, make sure to wait five minutes. This is to allow the DC bus to fully discharge on the drive. Before using a scope to take measurements, it's very important that we understand what type of signal are we trying to analyze and what should that signal look like on the scope. It's very easy depending on the, the scope itself, the probes that are being used, or even settings on the scope for noise to be induced onto the waveform of the image that we're looking at on the scope screen. And if you don't have the scope set up correctly or know what the signal should look like, it's very easy for noise to look like real events and for you to possibly come to the wrong conclusion of there being issues when in reality they're not. So you wanna understand what the magnitude of the signal is, the voltage or current level, and also what should the time rate or time base of that signal be. This will help you make sure that you're using a scope correctly when you using uh, analyzing signals. For people who use uh, a scope for the first time, it's very easy to rely on the auto button to get an image on the screen and for then all measurements and analysis to be done from that point. When an auto button is pressed, a scope will just trigger on what the signal it thinks you are attempting to see or looking for. When in reality, it may not be the actual part of the signal you're looking at or wanting to see. I use the auto button to initially get an image on the screen, but I then use the t adjust the time base and magnitude level to get to the point of the signal I'm actually trying to analyze. It is important that we make sure we set up the input channels correctly to the, either the voltage or current probe connected to each individual channel. In the video on the right, I'm setting up channel A for a voltage probe, a 10 to 1 ratio. On channel B, I'll be setting that up for a current probe. It's very important that these channels are, like I said, are set up correctly. Otherwise, the magnitude of the signal being measured will not be properly displayed on the screen. In the video on the right, I am showing the input voltage waveform to a VFD. I have the input voltage coming in on channel A on the scope. So I have channel A set up for my voltage probe. And I see a nice clean sinusoidal signal there with little voltage uh, distortion, which is what I would expect being in the uh, building power in our factory. Here you can see I've adjusted the cursors, the vertical ones, which are the time-based ones. And I can see that, yes, the signal is 60 hertz, which is what I expect being its utility power. Now here I adjust the horizontal cursors, and you can see I'm looking at the peak voltage, which is around 700 volts or 0.7 kilovolts, which makes sense being 480 volts times the square root of two, which is approximately 700. And here I'm using the meter function of the scope to look at the RMS voltage, which is as expected, 400, around 480 volts. Now that we know what a clean AC voltage signal looks like, let's review some distorted voltage waveforms. The image on the right shows a voltage waveform that has flat topping on the top and bottom uh, peaks. With this distortion, the incoming voltage of the drive is not reaching its maximum value, so the DC bus is going to be reduced. What this could then result in is that when the motor is trying to drive is trying to run the motor at full speed, the VFT may have a hard time getting full output voltage to the motor because the input voltage source has been distorted and is not at its maximum value. So this is an example of flat topping of the voltage uh, waveform. The image on the right is another example of a distorted input voltage waveform to a drive. This screen can capture was taken at a high-rise building in the city of Chicago. What we see here on this way from these vertical lines are the distortion caused by elevators within the facility. When the elevators would run up and down, they would cause at times the VFD to actually trip on overvoltage. 
due to the distortion that, and spikes that they're created in the voltage waveform. The reason I bring up this example isn't just to show you a crazy voltage waveform, but it's actually to talk about when you get on a job site, it's important that you d talk to the building owner or chief engineer and ask them, for example, a one-line schematic of the facility. It's a good idea to understand what are all the other sources of distortion within a facility. Just because you're troubleshooting a drive, distorted input voltage to the input of the drive, it doesn't mean the drive is the cause of the problem that you are troubleshooting. It may be a good idea to actually, if possible, turn off power to the drive and on the primary side of input disconnect to the VFD, take voltage measurements. This would show you the existing voltage distortion potentially without the VFD even being powered on that you could then show the building owner or chief engineer that your product or the VFD that you sold is not actually the cause of the problems at the job site. Before we conclude our discussion on measuring input voltage to a drive, it's important to discuss where we take the measurement with the scope. If, for example, there's an input line reactor or a passive harmonic filter in front of the drive, do we want to take it on the primary or secondary side of the filter? I'm going to suggest that we take measurements on both sides of the filter. And when we do these measurements, I also want to make sure the VFD is running at the same speed or at the same load during this time when we take both measurements. The reason I want to take two measurements is I want to understand what is the input voltage before the filter comes into play. What is the facility's input voltage quality or distortion level? And then if we suspect maybe we're having issues with the input voltage because of the filter, I then want to understand what is the filter doing to the input voltage. So that's why I want to take it also on the secondary side of the filter. Now I want to move on and show you what the input current to a VFD looks like. We're first going to start out with a micro drive. This is an ACS320 drive with no input impedance. What I'm doing here is I select channel B activate that because that's what my input current uh, probe is connected to and then I deactivate channel A. As you can see here on the screen I have the classic rabbit ears, a VFD with no input impedance. If I select meter I can uh, set up the meter for amps and I can see that my RMS amps is 18.8 .8 amps coming in. Now if I select cursors here as I, after I increase the time base I can actually measure the peak current now you gotta remember that the peak current will be quite uh, high on a drive with no input impedance. And in this case, it's around 46.4 amps is the peak current. I now wanna show you what the input current looks like on a VFD with input impedance standard. We're gonna use the 58001 drive, which has 5% equivalent input impedance built into the drive in the form of dual DC link chokes. We're first going to look at the RMS current, which is 13.8 amps. Now we're going to adjust the cursors and look at the peak current. Peak current here you can see is uh, around 24, 25 amps, which is what it should be around uh, compared to the six, uh, six pulse drive with no input impedance that we previously looked at which had around 46 amps. So this drive has much less peak current, which is expected. Now let's look at the input current on a ULH or ultra low harmonic drive. Here you can see the RMS input current is 12.3 amps. You can also see that this input current waveform is very much sinusoidal, which is expected as we have a low harmonic drive. And here I look at the peak current. You see it's around 18 amps, which is, ex is what it would be expected being it's a ULH drive. All right, let's summarize what we've learned today. Remember, before making any connections with a voltage probe or current clamp, we want to follow arc flash safety and lockout takeout procedures. Before we use a scope on a drive, we want to understand the signal that we're about to measure. What is the expected magnitude? And frequency of that signal. We want to make sure we're not just looking at noise when we see an image on the screen. We also want to make sure that the input channels are set up correctly depending on if it's a voltage probe or current clamp. We discuss what normal and abnormal input voltage waveforms look like and we also discussed the different types of current input waveforms that you'll see depending on the drive type you have from a six pulse drive with no input impedance all the way up to a low harmonic drive. Also if chasing for example input voltage problems on a drive, it's highly recommended that you ask for a one-line electrical diagram from the facility chief engineer or manager 
as the issue that you're chasing on the drive that you're troubleshooting may not be caused by the drive, but another device hooked up in parallel to, to the VFD at issue. This is Peter Wilder with ABB, and this concludes the presentation on looking at the input voltage and current waveforms to a VFD using an oscilloscope.